guys, this is Ryan from h and Outdoors here with you tonight. Tonight what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cleaning a brake action muzzleloader and I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. All the way from uh, <clears throat> taking the gun apart to cleaning it uh, and putting it back together. I can have this gun clean in probably under 20 minutes uh, with a conventional inline muzzleloader or a traditional side hammer muzzleloader it would be just about all evening because you know there's a lot more processes to have to do with them. With this gun here there's very few parts to take out and clean and yeah, I just like them. Uh, this is the first year I've ever hunted with a brake action muzzleloader and I love it. I uh, couldn't ask for a better gun. Before we get started guys there's something I feel like I need to share with y'all. If you guys have seen your Facebook page a couple nights ago, uh, Mike put on there, he said, here at H&S Outdoors, we're one big family, if not by blood, but by brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we're, uh, you know, I've come across a couple people here in the past little bit who have been having problems in their life and they're just having a lot of troubles and they're going through a, you know, very hard time. And uh, I just want to, felt like I needed to point something out to you and just share this with you. And, uh, you know, God's always been there for us. He's always going to be there for us. And He's always going to help us through these times. You know, God never promised us an easy life. But He did promise us that He would be there and walk beside us every step of the way and help us through our troubles. And before we get started real quick, I'd like to open up to Psalm chapter 34, verse 17. And it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. There is nothing more important to remember in a time like this, guys, than that. Um, you know, it's absolutely amazing, uh, you know, what he can do for us. He does so many things for us each and every day, and a lot of things we don't even realize, but he does. You know, every single thing that happens in our life happens for a reason, guys. And uh, you just have to remember, just put your trust and cast your, you know, put, put your trust in the Lord. And cast your troubles upon him and he will take care of you. I promise you. Now I just felt like I needed to share that with you. Um, but here in southwest Virginia, the early muzzleloader season starting to die down. And uh, rifle season opens up tomorrow. So we're going to get this gun ready. Could store away till the late season. And uh, it'll be clean to... Uh, get out and, and you know we shouldn't have to do too much to it whenever we get it out the late season maybe shoot a couple primers through it you know make sure all the oil's dried out of it um, and maybe shoot a bullet or two through it see if my scope's still on make sure I didn't hit my scope or anything now if you've seen my personal YouTube page a few weeks ago I did a review on this gun and I hadn't hunted with it yet I just shot it on the range and sighted it in and I give this gun an 8 out of a scale of 1 to 10. Well, I've killed two deer with it since then. And I give this gun a solid 10 now. It's a, it's a wonderful gun. It's definitely worth the money. You couldn't ask for a better gun. Now, uh, first thing you want to do with this gun is you're going to take it out of your wrist. I'm going to break my gun down, and I'm going to take the breech plug out. Now, the newer CVAs has the quick-release breech plug. This comes out with 15, 20 counterclockwise turns, and it's completely tool-free. You just turn it with your fingers. So, and that's, that's you know, a good little feature on that. And uh, I'm not sure if the Thompson Centers or Knights or any other competitor brand has them yet. If they don't, I'm sure they'll get them here soon. I don't keep up with anybody else but CBA, but you know I'm sure if they don't have them already, they'll have the same. So here's what you're gonna do to your roots plug. Right here, this black stuff is grease, and that keeps it from seizing up in your breech. I'm gonna take this brush. This is a breech brush, and I'm just gonna scrub the threads just a little bit to loosen that grease up. I'm not gonna scrub it completely clean because I'll be here all night, so I'm just gonna loosen it up. And the important part is this hole right here. That's your fire channel. That's where your primer goes. This is a fire channel brush. 
and I'm just going to put it down in the fire channel and scrub it real good and get that carbon fouling up. Whenever you shoot primers through it, you get carbon fouling build up in there. And it can actually affect your accuracy a whole lot if you get so much build up in there and your shot placement won't be consistent at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, tap it a little bit, get that carbon build up out of there. And this here, this uh, part soaker at CVA has got, makes this next process a whole lot easier. Just pull your tray out, put your bridge plug on it, drop it in the cleaner, put your lid back on it, and set it aside for a few minutes. If you don't have a part soaker, guys, there's other ways you can clean them. A part soaker is just the easiest for me to do. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ramrod out. And I'm going to set it up with my cleaning jag. This is my cleaning jag. It's my ramrod. And it just screws in there like that. Alright. You can use a range rod, a cleaning rod, but... I carry the ramrod stays on the gun, and I just carry the you know I use the ramrod clean with. It's easier for me. You don't have to. A lot of people use these T17 patches. They got the cleaner on them, and they got board. Well, it's like a somewhat sort of like a board butter, and they work really well. But a lot of people don't use them too. So I'm gonna show you how to make them. You know, First, what you want to do, I got some patches that, that are already cut to 50 50 caliber board. I'm going to take one of them, and it's clean by the way. Take some rim oil, you can get this about any Walmart or any sporting goods store, and just spray it. And you want to saturate it up real good. I'm going to take them again and set the butt up on my toe. I'm going to set that patch right there on the end of the barrel. And I'm just going to push it down with my cleaning jag and my ramrod. Now this gun has been cleaned here recently. And I haven't shot it since it's been cleaned. But that doesn't mean there, that there won't be any rust in there. And there could always be a possibility of that. Uh, and you want to keep the rust out as much as possible. Because rust can affect the accuracy too. Now I shoot powerbat bullets. Some people shoot savage bullets. And that's fine. You can see there's some rust on that. Now if you shoot savage bullets, there's going to be a couple more steps you're going to have to do to clean your barrel because the savage bullet's got a uh, plastic cup coming up inside the bullet. And whenever the powder goes off, the plastic's engaging the rifle in your barrel instead of the bullet. And it's leaving plastic residue behind. And uh, it can actually, you know, get bedded in your rifle and in your barrel when it just makes a mess. So it's always good to keep that out. I always shoot pair of bullets just because they're easier to maintain your barrel with and I just like the way they shoot. I've always shot in other muzzleloaders, I've always either shot round balls, whether it be side lock muzzleloader, or in a conventional inline muzzleloader, I've always shot savage bullets, but I always shoot power belts in my brake action, just because I like the way they shoot in. You don't have to shoot power belts in, in a brake action, I just like the way they shoot. But I'm not telling you what to shoot, I'm not telling you what to clean your guns with, but I just, I just like power belts myself. I'm going to run one more wet patch down the barrel because it came out a lot cleaner that time. And uh, just going to run one more through a couple times. And this uh, rim mold works pretty well on lubrication too. It's a lot like WD-40. Matter of fact, I have used WD-40 many times to clean my guns with. I've never used it to clean a muzzleloader with, but I've used it to clean my shotguns and my rifles. And WD-40 works pretty well too. And it's a lot cheaper in some cases if you buy the, the generic brand. It's a lot cheaper than 
by a gun at all. But I've never used WD-40 on a muzzleloader that I can remember. And that one come out a lot cleaner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a dry patch. And I'm going to run a few dry patches down it. And dry that oil out. And I'm probably just going to run one more dry patch through it. And I, I think we should be good. It's cold here in southwest Virginia. It's in the low of the 20s and it's snowing out. And uh, it's as cold. It'd make good hunting weather if you could bear to set in it. And I like hunting in cold weather, so it works out pretty good for me. Now, what next step I'm going to do is I got some T17 uh, lubricant. And I'm going to take a clean patch, it's a dry patch, and I'm just going to take some of it, and I'm just going to squirt it out on this patch. And where it's cold, it's kind of like froze. should be good. What this does is it helps your bullets go down a lot easier. And you just want to run it down there like you did the other patches. And the inside of your barrel is ready to go. Now we just gotta take the gun apart and clean it up and uh, put it back together and we'll be done. Alright guys, I just happened to look up and saw that my camera wasn't recording anymore. And uh, hopefully I cut it back on, hopefully it stays on. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble the gun. All it takes is one screw here. The CPA's only got one screw. Now I'm not sure about Thompson Centers or Nikes or anybody. They may have two screws, they may have three screws, and they may be held together by super glue. I, I don't really know. They, they come up with all kinds of different ways now to put these back on. And there's that screw. I'm just going to set it right here and hope that I don't lose it. And that comes off just like that. Just break the gun down. And that comes out. All right. I'm just going to set my stock aside for a minute. And I have me some Impro 7 right here. I picked it up at Walmart. It cleans up really well and it gets the job done, so I like it. And it foams whenever you spray it. You can just put a little bit on the scope there. Whenever you spray a scope, just make sure you don't get it on the lens because then you could have a big mess to clean. And uh, it just make your job a lot harder. So I'm just going to set that there. We're done with that. I'm going to grab me some clean patches. And well, i got a pet peeve about that side of my barrel. I always take a clean cloth and clean me out a spot there. And then I'll just take my rag, or my cloth, and wrap it around there. And that's what I hold it by. I don't like touching my gun with my bare hands after I clean it because, you know, unless I'm hunting or sighting it in or something. If I, if I have to, it's fine, but if I can get by with it, I won't touch the barrel or the metal on the gun with my bare hands because it can actually cause your gun to rust and uh, the holes in your hand can. So I just always, if I'm putting it up for a while, I try not to touch it. If I do have to touch it, I don't touch it. You know, I touch it as less as or the least that I have to. And uh, try to get that there.
there, man. Get the exterior of your gun real good. Now, if you're cleaning the lens of your scope, you can get the, the lens cleaner alcohol wipes like you would for your glasses. They work well. Uh, a microfiber cloth works well. You don't want to put gun cleaner on your lens. That'll make a mess. Um, so, you just don't want to do that. Alright, now the exterior of your gun's clean, the barrel and the scope's clean now. Now, the receiver, there's not much to it. All there is is a hinge here where your barrel pivots at, and you've got your uh, firing pin assembly right there, and that's all there is to it. The rest of it's just a casing. You want to take your rim oil and just spray the inside of it just a little bit, and maybe a squirt or two on the outside and just take it and wipe it down. Now sometimes, uh, I learned the opening day of muzzleloader season here in Virginia, it snowed and the snow turned to rain and uh, I was out in it for several hours and when I did that rain got down in this receiver and it rusted a little bit and a couple of days after that I went to go load it and it was a pain in the hind end to break down where it rusted and it was catching on there. So. Uh, I always take a little bit of rim oil, and I'll show you here in a second. And that's clean now, but I always take just a little bit of rim oil and spray that hens down just a little bit. And that's ready to be put back together. I'm going to set that in my lap for a second. I'm going to put my cloth there. I'm just going to pick my gun up, set it back down in there. Slide that back on. There's that screw. Put the screw in there. And tighten it up with my screwdriver. You don't want to over tighten it because you can run into some problems. You could strip your screw out and then you just have a mess. So your gun's put back together, all except for your ramrod and your breech plug. I'm going to go ahead and just take my cleaning jag off my ramrod. And I'm dropping things, so just overlook me. I'm just going to put my ramrod in the gun. Now it's time to get my breech plug out. There's the breech plug. I'm going to turn it in that rag and get those threads and stuff dried out. Dry the end of it off. Now I took the brush and went up in the fire channel and got all that out. But there's a hole right here and that hole will get clogged up sometimes even if you run the brush through there. Matter of fact, if you run that brush through there it could actually clog it up a little more. So this pick here has just got a wire on it that comes out the end of it. I'm just going to push it down that hole there and make sure that hole is open, and it is. Uh, this here is breech plug grease. It's anti C stick. It looks like a glue stick, and it reminds me back in kindergarten days when we used to use glue sticks. That was many moons ago. I'm just going to put this grease on the threads. I'm just going to take my fingers. And just rub that grease in the threads real good. Put 
Your breech plug is now ready to assemble back in your gun. And it just goes in there. Make sure you got started straight because if you don't, you'll strip the threads and then you're going to need a new barrel and that could run into some money. You'd probably be better off to buy a whole new gun if you did that. And, uh, and that's all there is to it. That's all there is to claim the brake action muzzle loader. Guys, <clears throat> there's a couple things I'd like to talk about before uh, I get done here. Me and Michael was thinking about doing a podcast here soon. Um, we, was planning to, we was planning to do it a couple nights ago, but uh, we had some, you know, some problems and we wasn't able to. So we uh, we're going to here here soon. We're going to do one, and it's going to be about different deer hunting calibers. We're going to answer a few questions that's been at, uh, you know asked to us. And uh, guys, if you got any questions, feel free to leave uh, leave us a comment or. Uh, an email. I'll put the email address up with the video. You can uh, catch up with us on Facebook at HNS Outdoors, and uh, we'd love to just answer your questions. If you got any questions, just feel free to leave them to us. Uh, we'd also love to hear about your hunting season. If you've been killing anything, just let us know. If you haven't, let us know. If you got any hunting stories, period, just let us know. We love hunting stories. We share our hunting stories and. I think I may get a little too excited and maybe exaggerate the truth a little bit with my hunting stories. But that's hunting for you. That's, that's hunting stories. Some of us do get carried away. But guys, if you got any stories or anything, just let us know. We'd love to share them. And uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, let us know about any ideas you may have for us. If you, if you have anything you'd like to see us do or talk about, then... then uh, Send us a message and tell us. We'd love to hear about that too. We've, we're always open to new ideas. Um, but guys, that's, that's all there is to cleaning this gun. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. And I hope you guys have a blessed day and stay safe in the woods. been driving me wild from the day we met I'm gonna see you again later on tonight and I'm